There are six mistakes that I see folks make in GarageBand iOS that can really impact your mix. In fact, I actually make some of these myself to this very day. So in this video, we're going to break them down to help you and me avoid these in the future. Let's go. Mistake number one is thinking you need to EQ absolutely everything. When you first learn about EQ or equalization, it's very cool because if you're hearing too much bass or too much treble, you can jump in here and you can adjust it. You can start putting your high pass filters in and give yourself a little bit of air at the top end here. But what I see a lot of folks do, and I'm guilty of as well, is actually jumping in here and EQing before you've listened to the track and realized if you need EQ. So especially your virtual instruments like your MIDI drums and your MIDI keys here, listen to them first because they've often already had EQ applied. So if we play this drum track... These are triggering drum samples here in GarageBand that have already had EQ and compression and a lot of other effects added to them. So before you reach for your EQ or any other effect, think to yourself, does this need anything? Mix with your ears, not with your eyes, and only add EQ if it's needed. Number two is mixing your tracks too loud. Here in GarageBand, we don't have great metering. We don't have a master fader. We don't have any dB measurements. So it can be hard to get your tracks at the right volume. And what I see too many folks do is actually turn their volume up too loud because GarageBand kind of holds your hand. It'll do the auto normalization at the end, meaning if anything, you should err on the side of mixing quieter because it's going to boost that at the end. And you'll notice here that my guitars and all of my other tracks here nothing is above about the midway point there unless it's recorded really quietly so make sure that you're mixing at a lower level now if you've mixed too loud there's a little workaround here a little hack and it's called the fx volume hack so if you're playing your track here and you find you've mixed it too loud and you want to make sure the volume's not too loud what we can do is hit the fx button here just hit record Twiddle something around with the FX because we're not going to use that. We just need this track to be in place. So we'll tap on that one, tap it again and delete it. But now what we can do is jump into this FX track, hit this one here, the visual EQ, and you'll notice we have a gain slider over here. I've already used this trick to reduce my gain by 10 dB. So if you're finding you're getting your exported track and it's got that pumping sound where it's doing this whenever your drums kick in or your guitars hit, then jump in here, turn this down and and then when you go and play your track, Fear of change, a it's going to be a lot quieter. So this is a great tip if you're finding that you're mixing your songs just too loud. Number three is using automation to adjust the volume of your tracks too early in the mix process. Now, if you've not used automation before, it's a great way to actually adjust the volume throughout your track, but leave it right to the end. Here's why. Automation, if we tap on the guitar icon here and then we tap automation, you can see here I've got these set to do some fades, to do some volume changes. There's a heap of videos on this very channel all about automation. But I do these right at the end. It can work really well because you get cool like fade outs at the end like this. But I only did that once I'd mixed my volumes of all of my tracks exactly as I want them. Why? Well, because once you've actually added automation, you'll notice that your volumes go yellow. You can't actually change these now because all of your volume controls are now within automation. So you actually have to come in here. If you wanted to turn this guitar up or down 1 dB to get your mix balanced, you need to come in here and do it in automation, you can no longer use your faders. So it's a little bit inconvenient if you're having to do that every time you want to make a change. So the simple rule of thumb that I use with this is automation is amazing, but do it as the last stage in your mixing process. Mistake number four is setting up a brand new project file and adding all my settings every time I start a new song. And I say me because I do this and I need to start taking my own advice. What GarageBand allows you to do is set up a template that you can then use for future songs. So here's my punk template where I've got vocals, bass, guitars, all set up here and you can add in all your different plugins, all your different effects and have it ready to rock and roll. And then when you start a new song, all you need to do is go to your template, tap 
and hold on it and duplicate that one and then rename it to your new song and start creating. It just means that you don't have to start from scratch. You're going to start with a nice drum sound as your metronome, some guitars, some vocals, some keys, some strings, whatever you use in a normal song, you can have set up. And of course, you can delete tracks as you need to as well. So instead of dialing in that vocal tone every time, those guitar tones, those drums, you can actually set up a template and save yourself a heap of time. Mistake number five, not using version control with your projects. What is version control and how does it work? Well, here is my song Temper song from a couple of years ago. And what you'll notice here is after the first project, every couple of days, I've got a new version. So every time I made a major change, I actually duplicated the project and created a new version. Now, you don't have to be obsessive like me and make 21 versions, but you can do this to make sure that you've got previous versions. How this works is if we are working on this project here and I've made some changes, if I tap and hold on this 21 and I hit duplicate, there you go, it creates version 22. I then jump into 22, I make my tweaks, I make my changes, and then I know that I've got version 21. If I completely mess it up or if the file becomes corrupt or I forget to save or any number of things go wrong, because if it can go wrong, sometimes it does, then I've got myself a backup here. So I can come back here and go back to any of these previous versions. It also means if I delete out a track and then I go, actually, I really want that track back, it's probably going to be in one of these files. Now, it will use up extra space, so you will need to ensure that you've got enough room on your device or on your iCloud drive, which leads us into the final tip, which is to save to your iCloud drive or make sure that you have a backup of all of your projects. I can't tell you how many messages and emails I get from very sad people who have lost a whole bunch of work in their GarageBand project. Why? Because they've only saved it on their device and GarageBand leads you astray a bit here because you'll see there's this on my iPad or on my iPhone folder and you can actually save projects in here. Here's the problem. If something happens to that iPhone or iPad, these are not being backed up. They're not being synced to iCloud. They're not being backed up anywhere. So if you have enough iCloud storage, use iCloud Drive and this GarageBand for iOS folder. Now, if you're running out of space or you don't want to pay extra, you can pay extra to get more iCloud Drive storage. And you can head to the link down below if you want to increase your storage. If you don't want to do that, at least back up your projects. And I'm going to show you now a quick and easy way to back up your GarageBand projects. To do this, we actually need to leave GarageBand and go over to the Files app. If you don't have this one, go to the App Store, search Files. It looks exactly the same, but it does some things a bit different. So let's just say I don't have all the storage and I'm using the on my iPad location against Pete's advice here. Well, what you can actually do is back these up. But before you just go trying to copy them to Google Drive or Dropbox or put them on a USB storage device, you'll need to actually zip them up. Thankfully, zipping super simple here. If we tap and hold on this project and come across to compress, what that's going to do is compress that into its own zip file. And then once that's completed, we can then transfer that file out to wherever we want to put it. So here you can see the little progress meter is now done. And now we've got this file here. You can then open Google Drive. You can open Dropbox. You can put it onto a USB drive. You can store it wherever you like. And then when you want to bring it back, it's the reverse. You bring it back into here, you tap on it, and you can see there it will open up and it will create the project file back here on your iPad or your iPhone ready to go. The reason you need to do this is that none of your those other platforms will support this GarageBand format. It'll actually make it corrupt and means it won't be able to open the file. So if you're moving it anywhere outside of the Apple world, outside of iOS or outside of Mac, Use your zip and you'll be good to go. I hope this helps you avoid these mistakes that many folks, including myself, have made far too many times. What do you think, though? Are there other mistakes that you've made that you'd love to share with the community? Drop those in the comments down below. And while you're there, check out my complete range of GarageBand tutorials to help you create, record, and release your best music in GarageBand iOS.